gonna, I don't have a tiara, but I'm gonna go for this regal look. What do you think? Mm. Bit Anne Boleyn. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> this week, Meghan Markle and Prince Harry sat down with Oprah Winfrey for an explosive expose on the royal family drama and their experiences. After many years of negative commentary from the media and so-called royal experts, we finally get to hear Meghan and Harry's side of the story although the validity of their claims is already being questioned. Yes, Piers, I'm looking at you. When Meghan Markle revealed that a member of the royal family had raised concerns over how dark her son's skin colour would be and how she had had suicidal thoughts, I believe her. Again, <laughs> another one. Ah! Shut it off! A number of concerning issues were highlighted from both inside and outside the so-called firm, which raises the question, is it time we abolish the monarchy? Now, a big part of the media slander against Meghan has been racially charged. Both Meghan and Harry highlighted in the interview their disappointment in the palace for their lack of protection in regards to the media barrage against Meghan. At any point, the palace could have stepped in to condemn the racism, but they didn't. Even if they didn't want to protect Meghan as an outsider, Surely they'd want to protect the narrative on the Queen's great-grandson Archie, right? In 2019, BBC broadcaster Danny Baker was fired after tweeting an image of a man and a woman holding hands with a chimpanzee, along with the words, Royal baby leaves hospital. But again, I ask, why didn't the palace stand up to protect their own and condemn this behaviour? This follows a long tradition of the stiff upper lip and silence on the palace on almost everything. Meghan could have been their chance of modernising the royal family, and instead they chose to remain silent on real life everyday issues such as racism. The royal family is not a realistic representation of Britain, nor the world of today. That might sound obvious to us mere peasants, but Meghan entering the royal family could have been a step closer to achieving that. Someone from a fairly normal upbringing, divorced parents, divorced herself, she represents a large proportion of the real world. Now, it's not a given that members of the family are just racist without a wider context. The monarchy itself is institutionally racist. How do you think this country is so rich? I'm sure it has nothing to do with the fact that we stole and pillaged wealth from the global south under the orders of the crowns gone by. Or where exactly do the crown jewels come from? Oh, where are the jewels? Many people deny that there is a racism problem within British society, even more so within the royal family, but with comments like this being made so openly publicly about Meghan, it's impossible to deny. I see a very attractive, I see a very attractive woman. It's never occurred to me that I never look at her and think, gosh, she's black. In the way you look at Oprah Winfrey, you would be in no yeah. doubt. There is racism within all parts of society and it would be foolish to assume that the royal family are exempt from that. The arm between the media and the royal family have been closely linked for decades. Harry revealed that the family are scared of the media and the power they have to destroy them if they wanted to. In my opinion, that translates as if you have the media on side, you have the people on side. But as soon as that changes, you lose the media and you lose the people, the royal family as an institution would become null and void. This would be a terrifying prospect for the royals and the so-called firm behind them. So it's kind of no wonder that they take this stiff upper lip, don't complain, don't explain stance all too frequently, and in more recent events, to their own detriment. In an unusual turn of events, last week the palace announced that it would be investigating claims that Meghan had bullied and been aggressive towards palace aides and staff. Rumours that were made over two years ago but were never followed up at the time. Now, unfortunately for the palace, this has made a lot of people question why they are suddenly now so interested in making statements and opening investigations when they chose to ignore a much bigger problem last year when Prince Andrew was found to have been close friends with convicted paedophile Jeffrey Epstein. Oh yes, I remember that. Not a single statement came from the palace and to be honest, we haven't seen or heard much from Prince Andrew since. Could it be safe to say that the firm had a keen hand in ensuring the media attention around this quietened down to avoid scandal and scrutiny around the palace? Meghan has had near constant hate since it was confirmed that her and Harry were dating. Some of the most outrageous and most obvious hate and bias towards her were when she has been compared to Kate Middleton. If Kate did something, it's almost guaranteed that Meghan would be blasted for doing the exact same thing. Kate cradles her bump and it's tender. Meghan does it and it's attention-seeking. Kate eats avocado to cure her morning sickness, but 
Megan also ate avocado and is the creator of water shortages and human rights violations. For Kate's wedding bouquet, it was traditional, but Megan's almost identical bouquet put her flower girl's lives at risk. Regardless of whether or not you think she's a nice person, regardless of whether or not some of the defamatory articles about her being manipulative or aggressive are true, which by the way are common microaggressions towards black women, that does not condone the treatment that she's had to face. In the interview, Megan also talks openly about her struggle with mental health issues and having suicidal thoughts, but that when she approached the firm for help, she was told that it would not look good for the family if she were to seek help externally. She also described how alone she felt, that she was denied opportunities to meet with friends, and she often spent months on end without leaving the house. Harry admitted that his father and brother were trapped by the construct of the institution. It seems the royal family are separated into the family itself and the firm behind them, and the firm seems to be the ones with all the power. What's been so shocking to see since the interview aired, however, is the blatant disregard for Meghan's mental health struggles. Many people have been all too quick to dismiss her claims as nothing more than attention-seeking lies. No less than Markle's most obsessive troll, Piers Morgan. But yet you continue to trash her. Okay. I'm done with this. No, no, no. Sorry, no. Oh, uh, Sorry. So, do you know what? That's pathetic. You can track him, maybe not my. No, own no, no, no. See you I'm, later. I'm being. So Sorry, can't this do this. This is absolutely diabolical behaviour. His comments and accusations denying that Meghan suffered from suicidal thoughts were so dangerous and vehement that mental health charity Mind put out a statement on Monday condemning his words and encouraging those that are suffering in this way to speak out and assure them that they would be taken seriously. Whether or not you like Megan or believe anything she has said in the interview, we must be careful in the message our words sends to others. She won't see the comments that you think she's lying, but your suicidal friends will. Just over a year ago, Caroline Flack tragically took her own life after an onslaught of harassment from the press concerning her personal life. The be kind sentiments that followed her death are completely non-existent when it comes to Meghan. In regard to the couple making the decision to leave the family, I really don't think you can blame them when we lay all this out in front of us. Harry felt he had to take matters into his own hands. He could see history repeating itself and he didn't want his wife to meet the same fate as his mother. And I'm aware that many people don't agree with their decision. Many people are putting all the blame on Meghan, but I think when someone takes such a drastic action and potentially causes such a rift in their own family, there has to be a very good reason for doing so. So what do you think? Were Meghan and Harry right to leave? Does the royal family serve any kind of purpose in our modern multicultural society? Let me know in the comments and if you enjoyed this video, check out the rest of the channel and make sure you like and subscribe for more independent media from Independent Voices.